Okay, let's start. So we are going to discuss capital budgeting and uh, how do we evaluate or take those calls when companies decide to invest their long-term capital to create long-term assets. So essentially, all of us know by now that we create those long-term assets because the companies want to create value for shareholders. And obviously, the long-term assets will create long-term cash flows. And when they will create those long-term cash flows, if they are more than what investors could earn on their own out in the whole financial world, it creates value for them. But the only problem with the long-term assets and their cash flows is that the cash flows are forecasted into the future. And unless you are a clairvoyant, uh, you won't be able to peek into the future and know for sure that these cash flows are exactly going to come. I think uh, what the class actually brings is a perspective from different parts of a business and consolidates it into a whole. So I, for till now, had more of a finance-ish background. But now that I can finally see the picture that, okay, how does that get inculcated into marketing? How does marketing get inculcated into the strategy? And how overall the strategy seeps down till the bottom part of an organization and how a product runs. I think all of that is what we've learned in the class. It's a case about a company which is, uh, which is making uh, aggregate or soluble food items and it is into retail markets, right? So we are going to see what kind of assumptions do we take while they take a capital budgeting call and whether those assumptions stand the test of sensitivities. And the story actually about any case study starts off from exhibits uh, rather than the story that they write. So the exhibits tell you uh, the complexity in the decisions that you will face. We have learned so many things through the discussions around trends and even we learn uh, some conceptual things through the books and even attending the lectures. But there is always the practical aspects that we, uh, that we want to learn, that we want to uh, implement once we go into the industry. And to understand the circumstances in which we are taking the decision, I think that will be, uh, we learn through the cases. So the cases give us the uh, live exposure that the situation that person that uh, protagonist has gone through at this at that time and even uh, we can realize that uh, what are the constant he, uh, they were working in and what are the factors they have to look on so that's how a case uh, help you to mix your uh, learning uh, theoretical learning with the practical approach that you can implement or that you can apply to arrive at a decision so I think the biggest difference that uh, an MBA life brings to you is the dif uh, is bridging the gap between knowing and doing stuff. The kind of experience that uh, professors bring onto the table is massive and that really helps you understand the practical world. Uh, apart from that, there's, there's the obvious advantage of having people from different backgrounds bring on their, their perspective about specific things. So you have people from uh, backgrounds which are not really about, let's say, finance or marketing and their perspective to a new subject is something that differentiates MBA as a post commodity. So you already have an existing product, you are launching a new product, the existing product gets scaled off in some bit of sales. You see it in phones all the time, a company launches a new series of cell phones, the original series gets sold at a discount. So that's nothing unusual and we are going to question some bit of assumptions in here. So I move to four assumptions and I challenge all of them in front of you. I'll keep on coming back to you and asking you that what are your views on it. Here at IML, when we uh, we also have guest sessions uh, from the company executives in most of the cases and in most of the courses as well. So that way the understanding of how the things actually work out there. So being a fresher, I have also really learned from their experiences without being in the industry per se. This case kind of draws to you the the only thing that is worthwhile in NPVs and IRRs and all that because otherwise you become, you just calculate NPV, you just calculate IRR and your mind becomes happy. But um, I often tell to the students that I have taught in electives that I have seen, I have appraised more than 77 projects. I have never found anything in this world which has got a negative NPV or a IRR which is lesser than cost of capital. It all comes to you pre-prepared, right? So my skill when I go out and take calls uh, is not about uh, getting excited about NPVs and IRS. Anybody can put in an Excel sheet and calculate it. That's not a skill. Okay, my skill is that whether I know that industry or that business and whether I have knowledge where I can challenge those assumptions around it. And that's something which comes with a deeper interest into the industry to challenge that. Assumption. 
So I worked for two years in semiconductor industry, and I worked on products like uh, you know smart cars, smart watches, and things like that. And always I had a you know understanding of, of how these products work as such. But I always wanted to or was fascinated on what are the decisions, the parameters that go into entering a new market or developing a new product. So that bird's eye view or the holistic view of how things are done in company is something I wanted to learn. And I think that somewhere uh, I came, I thought of coming coming to MBA. So somehow using your previous experiences and learning these things, I think it definitely helped me in understanding or gaining that. By a bird's eye view, or at least getting to know how we can have a holistic approach. You see, if you would have got admitted into a medical school, then you would have a chance to practice on live people. Okay, you would have interned. Uh, there would be people coming in and going out. The doctor would give you explanations, and then you would slowly learn that craft and you know move on. The problem with business education is that we don't have live, uh, you know, industries on which you are practicing just now. So how do we introduce that live things into the classroom? Is through a case methodology. So we bring in a sector, we bring in a academic problem which reduces your knowing doing gap, and we try to tell you that if you would have been in the position of the protagonist, this is how you would have taken that call. So I think we can call it a day. Thank you so much for attending it. Thank you so much. Bye. See you next time.